So, it's actually been a little while since the last time I streamed Fire Emblem. Wait, well, it's not even been that long, but I like to think of it as being a little while compared to how soon I'd normally stream these together if I had content at the ready. Because the thing is, since last time, I have been busy. At the end of the last session, or just generally throughout the last session, I was discussing how in Fire Emblem Awakening, on a platform like Citra here, which I don't even know if I can freaking do a proper display capture. Bam, that! On a platform like this, where it's literally just my computer, like you can see my mouse cursor there, for example. On a platform like this, where it's literally just my computer, it's supposed to not be possible to get the spot pass missions. Because there's things like DLC that you, despite it being a platform like this, you can still like install it onto your game file but and that's well not onto your file but onto like the file of the game itself uh, not the individual save files but spot pass on the other hand involves connecting to the nintendo wi-fi network with that save file and then seeing like oh here's the extra data what would you like to get added to that save file so like the spot pass missions aren't considered like DLC. You can't just install them onto the game in general. You have to convince the game that it's connected to the Nintendo network and that it finds that data, which I thought might be impossible. I was wrong. Um, so my day today, after my classes, I wound up this, uh, I headed out, I brought my dogie with me as I, as I went out and about, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'll catch up on all the things in chat in a hot second, hold on a hot second here, I'm sorry, um, I went out, and you see, I have two 3DSs, I have my freaking fancy schmancy 3DS XL, that I like and stuff, and I don't want to come to harm's way, and when it comes to, when it comes to Fire Emblem Awakening, it seemed like the only way to get this spot pass data was to use an actual 3DS and that save file in order to connect to the Nintendo Wi-Fi network, yada yada, and then get that data. Which means that you need a way to transfer save data between the computer and the 3DS and like vice versa. I did not want to hack my freaking new 3DS XL just in case something went horribly wrong. I wouldn't want this one to be screwed over, but I just so happened to have a freaking original 3DS as well. And that was lent out, so I brought my doggy with me, and I went to my cousin's place where my cousin's kids, or his older, his older kid to be specific, was lent my 3DS and Pokemon Ultra Sun, and, like, he wasn't using it anymore, so I took it back, because my mindset was, if I'm gonna have to hack one of them, and potentially accidentally screw it over permanently, if it comes down to that, it may as well be the cheapo one that I don't really care about, instead of the freaking much better expensive one. And... Then I went to my grandparents' place. I brought the doggy with me, and doggy freaking loves seeing them. She's in a little bit of a food coma right now because she got lots of little bites of chicken as scraps and such, so she was really happy about that. She's really tired right now. Earlier, the, one of my plushies over there, the chimchar one, actually fell on her while she was trying to sleep, and it scared her, and she came down from the couch, and it took her a little while to settle back in after I was like, okay, don't worry, it's not gonna fall on you again. But yeah, so I went over to my grandparents' place. I wished my grandpa a uh, happy birthday, actually, turning 91 today. So, like, good on him for, you know, that many years and such. And they they were both super happy to see the doggy. It was, a, it was a nice visit and such. Had some food over there because that's what happens when you go to grandparents' place and such. And when I got home with my original 3DS in hand, I got to work. Over the course of about four hours-ish working on hacking this and figuring out how to transfer save data between my computer and vice versa. But I figured it out. So this 84 hour freaking save file, and hello, hello, Carvia, and I appreciate that there, Guzma. Um, this 84 hour save file that we've been working at over the course of the stream now exists on my actual copy. Wah, if I can zoom in here and it focuses, focus, please. This same save file now exists on my actual physical 3DS right here, like actually saved onto the onto the cartridge itself with the power of technology. It is so neat. So if I freaking get up here and such ugh, and go up to the camera. So my original 3DS here now has like all the data that I've worked at over the course of however long, like there's my build with an ego and stuff. 
my freaking close to 100 hours save file that we've been doing on stream for like 3,000 years is now on my physical 3DS. Of course, there are some like discrepancies here because this 3DS doesn't have the DLC. I transferred over the DLC and purchases onto the 3DS XL. So if I look at characters like say Irika and other DLC characters that I got, it just shows them in the tactician class, which is like the default for DLC units that it doesn't know like what class it is because you don't have the DLC. Because all my DLC is on the 3DS XL. But now that well, this whole process went well on this DS, I might try hacking the 3DS XL at some point, maybe. But yeah, so I was able to get my actual so essentially, how this worked, I do now have access to the spot pass missions on this file here. And essentially, how that worked, because you can't ever actually connect, like, an emulator like this to spot pass and the Nintendo Wi-Fi network and to download stuff. Essentially, I transferred over the save file from my computer onto my 3DS and my actual Fire Emblem Awakening cartridge. I then access spot pass from here, so I can go into, like, bonus box and stuff. And then like all that stuff works just fine on an actual physical 3DS. So I got like all the bonus stuff that I could except for some of the stuff from bonus teams. And with well, the main things being bonus maps, which is what you typically get these spot pass missions from. So I did that and then I saved again and then I transferred the save data that now has the spot pass missions back to my computer. And now I have that available. In addition, something else that I did while I was transferring my save data around is because, like, you, I, bleh, I can't words today. I have mentioned before that on stream and on this channel was not the first time that I have conquered Fire Emblem Awakening's Lunatic Plus Classic difficulty. That way before I was a streamer, I was freaking crazy enough to have beaten Lunatic Plus Classic before on my actual 3DS. So, while I was transferring data anyway, I transferred that file and it's right here and I guess however long ago years ago I was like grinding with some characters or something like that but essentially when I did lunatic plus classic all those years ago I this is my save file with it where uh, it looks like I was grinding with a bunch of characters I was preparing to get the child units I guess and pass down skills but Crom, what? Wait, why don't I see your? Okay, there we go. I guess I wasn't on full by default. All his stats are maxed out except for Res, and he even has like Limit Breaker and such. But where's my unit? There we go. So I think I've mentioned it on this like series before that when I conquered Lunatic Plus Classic in the past, all I did was make this busted build that I use in my main save file like on this channel. And then I just freaking soloed everything, including the final boss. So the final boss itself is freaking... And look, I have all the freaking paralogs all over the map because I never recruited the children. Because I was like, let's just beat the game first. And then I wound up soloing like the entire game with my freaking busted Robin build. And it was great. So that's really cool how this freaking 50 hour save file of beating Lunatic Plus Classic in the past. My first time that I beat Lunatic Plus Classic now gets to exist like on my computer alongside the save file of the second time that I beat Lunatic Plus Classic for the channel. So I think my original intention with that save file from back then was to like grind it out, get all the busted child units that I could and then tackle Apotheosis, but that never wound up happening. But now I have a freaking way, way ahead save file anyway that does does that. Um, Hakarbo is brave for saying this on stream now. Nintendo will come out of nowhere to cancel Harmonia to create disharmony. But I freaking... It's a save... It's a save data transfer. It's not like I got content illegally. It's not like I pirated the game. It is possible that Nintendo might still take issue with that. But again, it's not like I pirated the game. It's not like I got any content illegally. All I did was freaking put this copy of the game onto like my physical copy of the game to use my actual physical 3DS to get the data that I needed. And then I put the save file back onto my computer. So all of a sudden, despite this being freaking this platform right here of this, where getting spot pass stuff is supposed to be impossible, we now have all these spot pass missions, all these orange missions on the map. All it took was freaking four hours and an afternoon that I'm never gonna get back again. That's my story of today. That is my story of today. That's all I that's all I wanted to get out there. Um, one more thing. I don't think I can use wireless here. I don't think it's gonna work because activation complete. Oh. 
Oh, I can still- wait! Was this available before, or is this available because I have the freaking s changed save file that has the spot pass stuff? Like, I never really checked this before. Because, yeah, I got all this stuff. I got all the... It must just be because I have an altered save now. Interesting. Um, as it turns out, one more thing. Apparently, you can summon bonus teams to, like, the map. And you can, like, recruit the characters in them. So apparently I can get, like, any one of these characters. And I can get, like, a whole bunch of different characters from old Fire Emblem games. But apparently there's, like, a limit on how many you can get, which includes the DLC ones. Like, once you have, like, ten or something. I have no idea what the number is. It's like, nope. Choose one to get rid of. You can't keep them all, essentially. So I had to pick and choose a handful to put onto there. Like, I got a few in testing, for example. Like, here we have freaking... I have a whole bunch of freaking Fire Emblem 7 characters because the, that was my first Fire Emblem game. Like, Jafar is pretty cool and stuff. I also got, like, since you can get characters from, like, other save files and stuff, I also did that to get the freaking... a female version of my unit, which means that, therefore, it has Gale Force. And it is a plus skill minus luck, my unit. So just a little bit better. Like, my unit in this file is plus defense because the first four chapters are basically impossible to beat without having plus defense. So my unit isn't as good as he could be just for the sake of, you know, conquering the lunatic plus difficulty missions. But here is an example of that exact same build, except with a freaking great boon and great, like not boon, whatever the thing is. I guess you're missing a limit breaker. I can throw that on. And a female avatar so they can have gale force. So in case I ever want to use that, That'll be there. But yeah, and Hoxie, you're joking, <laughs> though, but this is Nintendo, they don't like hacking Nintendo device at all, no matter the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Shuggin just cracked your knee on the desk, that was <laughs> great, ow. Oh, noes. But yeah, when it comes to these characters that you summon around the map, I put a few while I was able to, and I guess I still can, because the option's still available to me, because I guess I have the altered save now. And you can parlay with them. I already have the freaking DLC version of Lin, so I... Don't really need that. I just summoned a whole bunch of the map to try things out. But while I was bringing units to the map and I had to pick and choose like which ones I was bringing here, I decided to bring a unit from a previous Fire Emblem game specifically for Carvia to recruit into my army. This one right here. This would be, I have no idea how to pronounce his name, but Lion, Leon, I have no idea. Prince Lion of Grado. Let's go ahead and recruit you into our army. Do I have to? Yeah, I do have to get rid of someone. So this is the screen that I saw. I did, oh, I, oh, it even counts my unit there. Yeah, isn't that neat, Garvia? Uh, I'll probably just get rid of Florina or something. I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to get rid of some of these units whenever I get like another DLC one, because look, it even counts like the DLC ones that we've gotten like earlier in this thing. So like, goodbye Florina, I'm sorry. I will always be on your side. All right, what, what's your build? Your renown is increased. So I guess I just have access to spot pass features on this file in general now, which is interesting. So I initially transferred over my file, like my original Lunatic Plus file from my 3DS to my computer. And I had access to spot pass there, but not on any other like files. It was only after I like did all the spot pass stuff wah, on my actual 3DS with this file and then transferred it back that stuff seemed to work. Though I guess I never really tried in this. So maybe it would have been enough. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, what's your stuff? So it looks like he, the sorcerer. Oh, he doesn't even show like a preview of stuff that he does because I don't have a weapon on him. Looks like he has Hex, Anathema, Tome Fair, Tome Breaker, and Vengeance. Gotcha, gotcha. Also, something interesting about every spot pass and every DLC unit in this game is they have avatar-like reclass options. So if I want to reclass, it's the same kind of thing as the avatar where it's anything apart from the gender lock classes. So in theory, they can have any skill apart from the gender lock class if you really want to like decorate a build, unlike some of your old favorite characters, which is which is a neato part about Awakening and really goes to show how Awakening was meant to be like the finale for the Fire Emblem series. So I don't know if I'm ever going to use him, but he's going to be like chilling my barracks and stuff and doing things there or something I don't know so the thing about these spot pass missions that I thought I might never get to do in this playthrough but we can now is 
they essentially bring back like all the main characters from throughout the story who died along the way. And there's like one other one that's unrelated, I think, or something like that. But yeah, wait, you told yourself you didn't want any spoilers on Awakening and yet you're here? There's like, oh, I, well, I guess I just said that these freaking side stories bring back dead characters, so I guess it's spoilers that they die if, <laughs> if there's that. Um, should I do them like in order? That one's 21. This one's 23. This one's 22. Okay, so it's 23, 22, 21, 22, 23 over there, and then over here. So there's a total of six of these. And that's 18, 20. So I assume this would be 19 up here? It's no big deal, really. My oh my. And then this one is, that one's 19. So maybe I'll just do them in order. We'll go do 18 first. One more thing when it comes to 3DS kind of stuff. If I do decide to do the same thing to my 3DS XL later as well, apparently one of the things that you can do with it is stream the footage of the 3DS to a computer or something like that without needing to spend like hundreds of dollars and waiting months for a capture card. I don't even think that 3DS capture cards are made anymore, so I don't even think that's an option anymore. But that would potentially be a way to actually play games on my 3DS instead of on the computer. I think I still prefer on the computer. I really like the freaking keyboard format and the speed at which I go through menus and such. And I also like being able to play these games in HD and better graphics than they're used to. Downside is, you know, there's the lag sometimes. But in the next game, Fire Emblem Fates, there is some stuff that does rely on online. So what I might do is potentially, potentially at some parts in the playthrough, if I get that set up, transfer my save data over from my computer to my 3DS just for like certain sections to do like certain online things and show them off and stuff like that. And then transfer the save data back to my computer and keep doing like the format that I'm most used to. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Also, speaking about Fire Emblem Fates, if I turn off Doggy Cam quickly, um, I, and if I turn off Darkrai in the jar, briefly, I was not lying when I said I have been busy on things. So, I put together a general layout for Fire Emblem Fates, and I have different options for Fire Emblem Fates Birthright. I have another option for Fire Emblem Fates Conquest. And finally, I have an option for Fire Emblem Fates Revelation. So I've been kind of working on these for a bit. I stayed up until like five in the morning putting this layout together for when we do that. So all in all, since the last time I've streamed Fire Emblem Awakening, I've been busy with things to say the least. So there's that. Also, hello, hello, Cam. Um, I am gonna briefly catch up on some things in chat that I missed here and stuff from way, way above. Um, I think I mostly got a lot of that scene. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think most of the stuff that was up there, I addressed like writing in chat before the stream properly started. I don't, I don't even know. I'm just gonna freaking turn this off. Turn that off, go back to the Awakening layout. So I have been, I've been working on things. I've been working on stuff and junk. Where was freaking 18 again? Also, I have never actually done these spot pass missions before. So I guess I'm going into these blind. I might be able to solo a lot of these maps. All I know is that they bring back freaking characters from throughout the story and stuff that died along the way and they're just like, hey, they're back now so that they can join your army for like no explicable or story important reason, essentially. Dead King's Lament. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Yar! My, my favorite letter of the alphabet, except there's a Y in front, so it's not even R. Whatever, cal cavalry's come, come to claim your heads, maggots. Darm, so I'll be killing you first. Eh, got salt in your ears, maggot. I said to move your maggoty hide. I honestly forget what voice I did for Gangrel. Like, it's been so long. This playthrough has been going on over the course of like a year and a half on and off. I honestly forget what voice I did for him. Huh? Maggot. What? You're a maggot. And if the maggot has further questions, my blade can answer him. <sighs> maggot is fine, thanks. <laughs> the maggot's a useless little sea square is what he is. Yarrow. Anyway, maggots, best keep what little wits you got. The cavalry we face is none other than Crom and his shepherds. Crom, hmm. a name rings damnable sour in this dead man's ear. 
Not that any of it matters now. Really? Are those the Dread Pirates we've heard so much about? Ah. Indeed. Their, le their leader is a man named Xanth. The so-called Southern Sea... South... That's not even Southern! It's Southern! Southern Sea King! His crew can stand up to most armies, and as such, he holds sway over the South. Extreme caution should be the order of the day... Wait, what? Extreme caution should be the order of the day against this one, my lord. I completely misread that. Yes. Right, then let's finish our business and get out of here. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, what... Also, I need to turn the thing back on. But yeah, um, and Goose before the question, what's the big dragon looking thing in the middle? The final boss? And I've defeated it before, but like, it's one of those games that puts you just before the final boss after you defeat it. So it's just like always there and just always chilling once you beat the game. So there's that. Um, but yeah, um, it's a black flag pirates. Yeah, <laughs> that goes pretty well. Hand in hand with the black flag playthrough we've been doing recently. Um, X, let's see here. You have a bullion apparently. So um, I think to recruit each of these characters in these side stories, I think you need to talk with Krom. I think I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Guzma, you're about to head to bed, but then I wrote your stream and didn't want to miss another one of his streams again. Hey, real life is a thing and sleep is important. If you need a sleep, feel free to get some sleep. Also, uh, in other news, hope you had fun with Phasma with Shuck earlier. I was lurking for a bit during that while I was working on my 3DS and stuff. Um, it's okay, they'll never stand up to Watchdog Beard, except not real. It's more like Fire Emblem Beard. Yar, it is I, Fire Emblem Beard. It is I, Emblem Beard. Wait. Hold on, let's just get a whole bunch of nerds in there. And then... Yeah, maybe I'll just bring my freaking arms thrift using mad lads. Where's Donald? There he is. Yeah, all my arms thrift users and stuff. All my busted ones. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Is I fire beard? Yes, exactly. Um... Alright, so the thing about the DLC of this game is the difficulty does not affect it. Whether you're playing, like, classic or casual affects it. But whether you're playing on normal, hard, lunatic or lunatic plus does not affect DLC missions. Spot Pabst missions do not count as DLC missions. Meaning we are dealing with the same freaking regular lunatic plus complete BS that I thought that we might have been done with since we've been doing DLC stuff for a while but it's now back in full force. Like, at least they don't have anywhere near max stats. I think all the dudes I'm gonna have to be wary of are gonna be the ones with counter, to the point that I might specifically just check who has counter and mark them in a red so I can take them out early. Because counter is literally my most hated skill in this game, and it has the chances of freaking completely screwing absolutely everything over. So, I don't mind things like freaking Luna Plus, but like, hit me with counter then we're not friends anymore, freaking. Gonna hit me with counter. My goodness. But yeah, Guzma, lol, I'll la, have one of your friends join us in the game. It was pretty like, oh, awesome. Glad to hear that it was a good time. Okay, there could have been way more with counter than this, I guess. Oh my goodness, there's a, oh, uh, I shouldn't have spoken. Oh my goodness. At least somebody over there has counter. Um, oh, there's dudes right here. Oh, they don't have counter, okay. Um, I feel like the one thing that can potentially royally screw me over here is counter. That's how I feel here, you know? Um, let's see. I'll put some of my kind of pairings here forward and stuff. Is what I shall do. And then, like, yeah, I mean... Wait, where's my unit? Oh, over there. I mean, hmm... No, wait. Maybe I should do this? And then I can... Oh, I can't rush all the way over there. I can just, like, switch Gregor with me. Um, oh yeah, I think I saw a couple of those game crashes there while I was lurking. It was hilarious death near the end of Shuck's stream. Maybe I'm gonna have to look back at that later. But for now, let's start the battle. Guess no cutscene to lead it out. Alright, let's go ahead and throw our pairings out there is what we do. Oh, I completely mixed up my Dread Fighters because they look exactly the same, whatever, not like it matters. Okay, let's see here. There's my pairings and such. 
and then these three freaking busted arms thrift users. So I don't have to worry about you. Dang it, freaking deselected the ones that had a counter. Dang it. Hold on, I'll reselect them again. Just so that I know that they're like the ones that I need to take out if I don't want to be screwed over by good game design. Um, you could just link it here if you'd like to, but I'd only be able to check it out after the stream, I think. I know that there's a lot of dudes that have counter over here that freaking scare me so much. And I think nobody over here had counter. Okay. Uh, what about the dudos that are here? Okay, they don't. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check out that clip later then. Most likely. Oh, I can't quite reach anybody there. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we should be pretty busted for- I love how we were on sand, but we're on grass now. Yeah, so we should be pretty busted for this. I feel like the only way that I can get janked over is by freaking counter BS. Is what I feel like. So, I mean, are you still running freaking Rightful King Lethality? No, you're not. I took it off. Okay. Um, gotcha, gotcha. I'll check it out there afterwards then. In that a case. Yeah, I forgot I changed an Ego's build back because we were doing like the really hard DLC ones. Um, I probably don't want to rush over there quite yet. Let's keep a little bit of distance from you. That's what we do. Yeah, how far am I into this? Into this game? We've beaten the game, the story. All that we have left are these little post-game missions that I'm doing now that I've had to freaking jump through crazy hoops to get set up here. <laughs> And we have like three DLC missions left. Thank you. One of which is known to be one of the hardest levels in Fire Emblem history, and I've already failed it once before. Well, I've already failed it in one three hour sessions worth of attempts before. So definitely more than once before, but one sessions worth of three hours of attempts I failed it. So it's um it's hard. So yeah, all that we have left in this game is really these spot pass missions that were like the most insane, one of the most insane things to set up I've ever done on this channel. <laughs> the things I do for my playthroughs, I guess. Um, and then like three more DLC missions. Yeah, it's just post game, essentially. There's no like, we finished the main story like, when did I finish the main story? That was like a year ago or something. We've, we've kind of been dipping in and out of this series for a good while, is the thing. No, wait, but you said Awakening was for beginners. I said that Awakening is, like, pretty beginner-friendly if you play on, like, normal or hard. If you play on, like, freaking Lunatic or Lunatic Plus like me, that's how to freaking hate life 101. It's basically what it is. Um, let's see here. So, like, don't play on Lunatic. You don't even have Lunatic Plus available by default. You need to literally beat Lunatic first before <laughs> Lunatic Plus gets unlocked. It's a secret difficulty that's, like, one of the most hard difficulties I've ever seen in any game of my life. And when it comes to the final DLC map that I was just talking about, it's called Apotheosis. And, like, it's meant as a freaking crazy thing for Fire Emblem players, especially considering Awakening was originally supposed to be the finale to the Fire Emblem series. Apotheosis, the final DLC map, is essentially the embodiment of, like, holy crap, let's just make, like, the most BS map ever. And there will be some crazy Fire Emblem fan out there who will conquer it, probably is basically what Apotheosis feels like. Same with freaking Lunatic Plus's difficulty in general. So, I mean... Yeah, we can just shred everybody here with our broken builds. I think the only thing I need to worry about is counter. So, as long as we play really safely around that, we should be fine. We should be A-OK. -okay. I don't think anybody's even gonna be able to, like, retaliate here with our damage output. Oh, you have Vantage Plus! Freaking... The only Lunatic Plus skill I really care about at my strength Daft. is counter. I hate that. Counter is the embodiment of a skill that's like, no matter how OP you get, you can still lose to complete random BS RNG. This is not worth going for. Let's just keep a versus knight on. Is what we do. Um, I guess I'll just toss Krom up there or something. Oh man, Cordelia can't quite reach over there. Whatever. None of these dudos have counters, so like, we're probably safe. I mean, I'll just go ahead and attack. Oh, did I have Meyer on? When was the last time I used that? Also, I'm glad that Luna's on instead of Soul now. Oh, Aegis Plus. Freaking Lunatic Plus skills. Thank goodness I'm too busted to care. 
The only thing I will never be too busted enough to care about is counter. Screw counter. I hate it. I just now noticed on the bottom screen there's some enemies like way above that. I didn't. Oh my good gracious. Lunatic plus. Oh, of course, Pat Vice plus. Okay. Maybe not having pair ups for some characters wasn't the best idea. Oh, crap. Thank goodness you didn't have Luna plus. Hopefully nobody else can attack Cordelia. Please attack, please attack with soul and like a crit or something. Oh my goodness. I am actually going to lose here. Oh my goodness. I'm actually going to lose here, aren't I? Oh, the miss. Why do you have Pavise plus? Oh, you're not attacking Cordelia. Interesting. Ow. My goodness. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have been caref as carefree as I was. Oh, you have Hawkeye. Ow. Thank goodness you do not have counter. Freaking. Anybody who has counter, if you proc Astra against them, it's just like your unit just dies. Is the thing. Um, I really hope Cordelia doesn't die. I shouldn't have been as careless. I thought as long as I didn't worry. As long as I was careful around counter, everything would be fine. But maybe not because it's Lunatic Plus, the most balanced game mode in the history of gaming. Ow. Please don't have Pavise Plus. They all have Pavise Plus. Holy crap. <laughs> don't you dare have Luna Plus. Okay, you don't. Nice miss. All right, well, heal some HP off of you. Please don't have Pavise Plus. He actually doesn't. He actually didn't. What is Lunatic Plus? A freaking secret difficulty that you unlock for beating a Lunatic. And the, uh, one of the most imbalanced game modes I've ever seen in any game in my entire life. If not the most, honestly. Like, I'm holding my own here just because my characters are literally maxed out. Well, Luna... Ow! I love how Luna Plus made 5 damage become 32. That was pretty cool. Like I said, freaking fun and balanced. Okay, we're fine. We survived. Um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it, Cam? Um, I wonder if there's a Lunatic Plus Plus. There isn't. It just goes up to Lunatic Plus. And then in the next game, Fire Emblem Fates, there is no Lunatic Plus. They removed it after how many complaints they got about how freaking busted it was in this game. Everybody was like, wow, Lunatic Plus is like the most imbalanced game difficulty ever. So there is no Lunatic Plus in Fates. It only goes up to Lunatic because Intelligences was like, oh, maybe we should have playtested our game mode before we shipped it. Because in the, in the game, if you do enough grinding and you go through enough classes, you can get some really, really cool skills. Like, for example, take a Luna, which is a skill that will trigger the percent amount of the time equal to your skill stat. So for me, it'll trigger 45% of the time, or plus 3, so 48% of the time. But at lower levels, say my skill is at like 20, then that means that Luna is going to proc 20% of the time. So it's something that kicks in every once in a while. And then it'll do, it's an attack that does damage based on if the enemy had like half of their defense or resistance stat, essentially. So you just shred through a bunch of their defenses. So that triggers like whenever, you know, it does according to your skill stat. In Lunatic Plus, enemies have skills like Luna Plus, which is just like Luna, except it happens with every single attack. Like there is no percent chance of it happening. It just happens is the thing. So there's fun stuff like that. Or there's skills that you can get like Pavis that have a skill percent chance of having damage from melee weapons. Enemies can get Pavis Plus, which will always have melee damage. There's skills that you can get like Aegis, which have range damage based on your skill percent. Like it has a skill, it has a skill stat percent chance of having range attack damage. Enemies can get Aegis Plus, which always make them take half damage. So if they ha if they have Pavis Plus and Aegis Plus, they literally always take half damage. Is the thing. Um, they also have fun skills. Like, let's see if I can find one here. Like Hawkeye. So normally, especially if you have like a weapon triangle advantage, a lot of the time you can dodge their attacks, especially at higher levels and especially if you have a weapon advantage. Hawkeye makes it so that they will always hit you no matter what. Which sometimes the art, the skills that they get on maps like this is completely randomized. So sometimes, sometimes enemies will get Luna Plus 
and Hawkeye together. You can't... These, this is a skill that is does not even available to the player, as far as I'm aware. So, you know, there's fun stuff like that. There's also fun things like counter that they get. Damage taken from an adjacent foe is dealt back to that foe. So if you're on a tile, like, right here, and you attack this guy for, like, 44 damage, you then take 44 damage, which can result in you dying and needing to restart the map from the beginning. Counter is literally the mo- that is- this is a skill that you can get on your own units, by the way, but it's, like, pointless because- you know, you don't want to be taking a lot of damage from the enemies in the first place, so reflecting their damage back to them from melee attacks isn't really that helpful. But for the enemies, wh where you as the player are required to take down every single one, having counter on them is like the most BS thing ever. Which means that in Lunatic Plus, people who use bows are kind of like the meta in Lunatic Plus. Because bows have two range, not one to two like tomes, or things like this where it can attack from one to two range, but just two. Meaning that if somebody came up to an ego and like a space right here and attacked him, he wouldn't be able to counterattack with the bow. Which is good in Lunatic Plus, because you don't want to counterattack, because if you counterattack and they have the freaking best skill ever counter, you just die. So it's better to just eat the damage from them being closer to you and not counterattacking, because counterattacking will usually result in your death. So when it comes to Lunatic Plus, the freaking meta of Lunatic Plus is use bows. So, you know, there's that and stuff, I guess. Um, but yeah, um... Hold on, why are people complaining about it then? I mean, obviously it's gonna be insanely difficult. People complain about it because it feels like it's not tested at all. And if I drag on, like, my series here, for example... Like... Yeah, so Lunatic Plus is the hardest difficulty in this game. And if I look at... Hold on, let's look at my playthroughs page here. Hold on, let's have a look-see. Where's Fire Emblem Awakening? We started a long time ago. Where was it? These are all reverse chronological, so there it is. So we're at 74 episodes, so this is gonna be episode 75. We started on May 26, 2019, so it's been like almost two years since starting. People complain about the difficulty, because it took me five episodes to beat the prologue. So here's half an hour of trying, and, fail and the prologue is supposed to be the tutorial level, by the way. Half an hour of attempts and I failed. An hour, oh, an hour 40 minutes and I failed. Here I finally won, but I lost one of my units along the way, so I had to reset because I didn't want Lissa to be gone forever. Then another hour and a half of attempts, and then finally the 20 minute successful attempt. After about four hours of attempting the tutorial over and over and over again. And I really, really lucked out. Like, during that was the thing. So, I mean... And also, the mo the hardest chapter in the game is Chapter 2 Shepherds. I got really lucky. I freaking beat this in a handful of attempts in under an hour. When I tried Lunatic Plus for the first time, way before I was a streamer, I could not beat Chapter 2 after weeks of trying. I spent like two months trying to beat it, and I couldn't of attempts on and off. So I had to delete my save file, start from the very beginning again, and then, from the beginning again, I had to cross my fingers for better level-ups so that Chapter 2 would be less hard, was the thing. Because, as is the way that I had it at Chapter 2 before, my avatar did not have enough defense level-ups in order to realistically tackle Chapter 2. So I had to go back to the prologue again, and I beat it like five or six times before I finally had the defense level-ups that I needed to conquer Chapter 2. I am convinced I am absolutely convinced that the devs did not playtest Lunatic Plus. This was meant to be the finale to the Fire Emblem series, and I'm convinced that all they did was just make an absurdly BS game difficulty and figure, hey, there's gonna be some crazy Fire Emblem fan out there who's gonna be smart enough to beat it. But Lunatic Plus is the definition of a game mode where your skill doesn't matter. All that matters is the RNG that you get, and that's literally all it boils down to. So, never put yourself through Lunatic Plus if you want to, like, have your soul intact and stuff. Um, like, I'm maxed out here, so I'm a- I'm a-okay. But the thing is, in Fire Emblem Awakening, even if you have the DLC, you can only grind after Chapter 4. So, like, I'm- I've grinded and stuff, all my units are maxed out, so it, like, usually isn't too hard, I guess? Since all my units are maxed out here? But before chapter 4, 
you can't grind. Meaning the first five levels, prologue and then chapters one to four, you need to do like without the option to grind or get stronger. If you're not strong enough by the time you get to a certain chapter, you need to start the game back from the very beginning again, trying to hope for the level ups that you need. Which is one of the reasons why in Lunatic Plus you basically need to have your avatar have the asset of defense. So that you can get defensive level ups and try to make your avatar like a second Frederick tanky unit by the time chapter 2 rolls around. I would argue that the hardest chapter, like, assuming if you go in with the assumption that you can grind after chapter 4 anyway, I would say that the hardest Lunatic Plus chapter is chapter 2. Second hardest is Prologue. Third hardest is probably chapter 3, and then from there it's probably random freaking BS things like Severus and Paralog, which is like one of those painful things ever. Oh my goodness, I hate Pavis Plus so much. Um, but yeah, um, let's see here. So then Lunatic Plus is the hardest difficulty they've ever played in any video game? Probably, yeah, honestly. Probably. If you're just strong enough, then guess you lost. Yeah, if you didn't get the random RNG level ups that you needed, especially in defense for the avatar, you're just screwed by the time chapter two rolls around. Like the one time that I, when I finally beat the prologue in this playthrough, um, let's see here, and moved on to chapter two, I lucked out so much. I got like some of the best RNG I'd ever seen. Oh, Vantage Plus, I, another Lunatic Plus skill I forgot to mention. Um, that makes the unit. That makes the enemy always attack first, even when you attack them. It's pretty cool and balanced. So they always manage to get, like, a pot shot in you before they go, even when you're attacking to finish them off. It's pretty dumb. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, man. Never do Lunatic Plus if you want to freaking be sane and things. I can't go up to that tile because I don't want to get into the range of this counter guy. Yeah, it's only unlocked after beating a lunatic. And there's two other settings of the game. Like, there's the main difficulty settings of normal, hard, lunatic, lunatic plus. But on top of that, you also set whether you want to play classic or casual. Classic means that if you have one of your units die in battle, they're gone forever. That's the way that the Fire Emblem series has been, like, known for in terms of, like, its crazy difficulty and stuff and its unforgivingness. If you lose one unit, they're gone forever. So if you don't want to lose them, you have to start the map from the beginning. I'm playing on classic mode. So if I lose any one of my units any time throughout the level, I need to start the level back from the beginning again, is the thing, for losing even a single person. In casual, units will come back after the end of a battle, if they died during it. Like, if their HP reaches zero in a battle, they come back after the battle's over. So, it's a more casual, beginner-friendly kind of thing, essentially. If you, p if you play lunatic casual, and you beat it, then you only unlock Lunatic Plus Casual. You don't unlock Lunatic Plus Classic. In order to unlock Lunatic Plus Classic, you need to beat Lunatic Classic. Um, will this aggro you to come out here? Because that might be good, and then I can, like, ambush you and get rid of the counter dudes and stuff. Um... Wow, d does their AI really not account for if they get sniped from the other side of the map? That works for me. Um... So, and even Lunatic Classic is already, like, I would argue way harder than any game difficulty should realistically be. I'm gonna just snipe all the counter dudes. That's what I'm gonna do. Because I hate counter so much. Like, even Lunatic Classic is already freaking absolutely absurd. Lunatic Plus Classic is the kind of thing where it's like, if you're not looking up a guide, then you're probably never gonna beat it. And even if you do look up a guide, prepare to take weeks of resets just to get to the point where you can actually grind and make things a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, um... So, what you're saying, I'm not sane? Basically, I don't know how any sane person could freaking play this game mode. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just take out all the freaking counter dudes. Is the thing. Like, I guess there's bragging rights, but like... All that beating it- All that beating Lunatic Plus Classic shows is just like a test of your patience. It doesn't show like your freaking strategic skill. Like, I guess a little bit in some situation it does. But more so, it just shows your patience and willingness to freaking see crazy BS through to the end. Oh, I should probably... Oh, you can attack all the way to that range. I don't want to accidentally kill you. So I should probably use... Yeah, if they don't want to come down here, I will probably will just use Noir to freaking snipe them all. Wait, I can do that with my unit too, can't I? Can I switch here? No. Darn you. Um... Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. But yeah, and it should be renamed to Brutal instead of Classic. What the freaking... 
thing about losing units forever. It's called classic just because that's the way the Fire Emblem series has been in the past. Where Fire Emblem Awakening was the most famous example of a Fire Emblem game introducing the option for units to come back after a battle. It wasn't the first one, but it's the most well-known one. I forget what the first one was. Was that Shadow Dragon on the DS? There was one game before Awakening that uh, I should get some stabs that don't... Yeah, I was preparing for Apotheosis, I guess. Um, I'll just get some generic heal stabs and stuff. Is what I'll do, and then use some of that and things. Um, that really is brutally classic. I mean, it kinda is. But I honestly really do like playing on classic. Like, some people do it in what's called an Iron Man, where if they lose somebody, they keep playing with that person lost. I, I don't do that. If I lose somebody, I start the chapter from the beginning again. But... I like that it adds a difficulty of like, okay, that means that if you've kept everybody, that means that you've conquered like every chapter without losing a single unit along the way. Whereas casual is like, you just beat the level. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna play it like this, honestly. Because if I let him attack any one of my OP units, they're just gonna straight up kill him, is the thing. Cause my units are way too strong. And I need him to live because he's almost well, certainly recruitable. Um, I mean, I could just take out like a lot of dudes around him. I might not be able to take out everyone here. Okay. Also, as I was saying before, even though I might have an option in the future to play directly off my 3DS and have layouts like this without, you know, pointing a camera at my screens, I might still stick to emulator just because like, I'm so used to like menu navigation and stuff like that on like a keyboard here. Dang, I can't quite reach up there. Like I do it quickly and such, as y'all see. Um, huh. So nobody else can attack from that range. So if he comes over here, then he'll be able to attack from two range. So if I put somebody here who just can't counter attack, yeah, so Krom can only fight from one range with the Exalted Falchion. So he shouldn't be able to counter this, and therefore shouldn't kill Gangrel, and then we should be able to talk to him. He's not coming over here?! Why are you doing this to me, game? Um, oh crap. I appreciate the three bits there, and anonymous cheer. Whoever that may be, I appreciate it. Um, I could literally just send my unit in here on a flyer to like, wreck things. Like, because I just don't want Gangrel to accidentally die to something dumb. So if I go here and equip not Mire, but a versus Knight. Because I'm worried about him dying to something stupid is a thing. You like that secret cheer mote? The super secret spooky ghost. Oh, did that bait him out? Oh, that baited him out. Okay. Apparently me deleting like every enemy over here and then putting Krom in range of him. Did not bait him out, but God forbid I take out these freaking random wyvern riders over here. Do y'all, you don't have counter, so I can attack you from one range without having to worry about that. Have I been digging into the Forged Brave Lance? That was not my intent. Oh, I guess because the fire broke. All right, we should be able to kill you here. And by the way, that was you. Gotcha, gotcha, Hawks. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the anonymous cheering can be a... Uh, it does have its nice aesthetic there, but... Also, the thing about anonymous cheering is it doesn't actually contribute to, like, the grand total of what the channel believes you to have, like, given in there. So when it comes to bit badges and stuff, it doesn't contribute to that kind of thing. Because it remains anonymous, so I'll go so on to post that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so we should be able to talk to him here. I want to delete the dudes around him first. Looks like these wyvern riders are coming down. I might just freaking pair up some of these units anyway. Because I'm gonna need to, me thinks. Um, you both have counter, meaning I gotta attack you from afar. If I don't want this damage reflected back at me. I hit counter so much. In one of these freaking spot pass missions, I am gonna lose and have to reset the counter. I'm calling it right now. Wait, do I have to defeat the commander? I just have to defeat the commander. We can beat it this turn. We can quite well beat it this turn. Let's just make sure I talk to Gangrel first with Krom is the thing. All right, time to smackaroo. Also, Astra is typically a useless skill in Lunatic Plus Classic, apart from on archers. 
because literally just because of counter. Astra makes it so that you strike five times at half the damage. That means that that's all getting reflected back at you because of counter. So like you, <laughs> Astra, which is normally one of the best skills in the game, is one of the worst skills in the game in Lunatic Plus because unless it's on a bow user, so the more you know. I mean, wait a minute, Gangrel. Gangrel is dead. Nothing but maggots here. Wait, wait, Gangrel. It's the Mad King. I'm sure of it. What? He doesn't. Does he not freaking join me on the first turn of talking to him? He better not freaking. Oh, you have counter. Oh, you have counter too. Oh, I don't have any flyers to put over there. Hopefully, they just go after my bow user. He's where you head off for now since you don't think you can stay for the full stream. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I appreciate you stopping by hanging out then, Guzma. I hope you have a good rest of the night. I really, really hope I don't lose to something stupid right here, right now. Please. Do I have to talk to him again? Or can I just beat the boss, beat the map, and then recruit him? I'm gonna Google this. I'm gonna Google this right now. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, Fire Emblem Awakening. Paralog. This is 18, I believe. The Dead King's Lament. Okay, let's see here. I need I need him to talk with Crom three times to recruit him. Uh, hopefully he doesn't attack one of my units and die. Um. Oh, you don't have counter, but this is bad because the ones that do have counter may. Ow! No! But yeah, take care of that, Guzma. Oh no, if the ones with counter attack Krom and Sev Severa, I'm screwed. Oh, oh yes, you're attacking from range. Oh, thank you, RNG. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for attacking an ego, one of my best units. Hopefully, hopefully the other ones attack him too. Okay. Okay, you're attacking Severa, who can't counterattack because she has a bow. This is why bows are freaking meta in Lunatic Plus. Please don't be a lot. Please miss. Okay, good. If she didn't have a bow, she'd counterattack right there. And then, you know, die because of counter. So that is why bows are meta in this. Okay, yes, as long as he keeps attacking Krom, then we should be fine is the thing. And Severa can then snipe these two nerds. And then it'll just be the boss and Gangrel, and then we can like talk a few times and stuff. All right, I think, I think we'll have conquered this chapter first try, which is good. Which is very, very good. Very good, unless there's random ambush spawning reinforcements, which I wouldn't be surprised from from Fire Emblem Awakening, honestly. I definitely would not be surprised about that. Well, goodbye. Well, good old Aegis Plus making him eat some more hits before dying. Okay. Works fine enough, I guess. Okay. And Ego will get ready to kill the boss. I need to keep talking with, like, Krom and stuff. He's probably gonna keep attacking Krom, but I should probably get my other units out of there just so that he doesn't get tempted to attack them, because if he attack- Oh, he can still reach them. Because if he attacks them, they'll just immediately kill him. Is the thing. So, like... Gangrel, I know it's you. How are you alive? By the power of freaking additional content stuff that has no connection to the story. Oh. Alive? No, Krom. This is not living. You killed me once, dear prince. So now I would beg you to do so again. My life is over, but my body refuses to accept it. What? Gods, listen to you. Is this truly the same mad king who stood against us? Really? That's it? Tear out everything that makes a man, and all you're left with is a husk. No throne, no gold, no men. I scrub chamber pots for brigands. Ugh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Ironic that you, of all people, are finally learning about long falls. Huh? Seems I'm not the only one who's changed, dear prince. Days pass, you'd have sheathed your blade in my chest by now. Perhaps you're less of your father and more of your sister than I thought. No. Your crimes are beyond forgiveness. But indeed, Emerian had a profound effect on me in almost every way. My only charge now is to save this world. I have no time for vendetta. 
Hmm. How very gracious of you. <sighs> Enough, Gangrel. What little life you still have is wasted here. I can offer you a higher purpose. You could fight for us. <laughs> now who's the Mad King? <laughs> Told you, I have no time for vendetta. Defeating Grima is all that matters. And while killing you here would please me greatly, it put me no closer to that goal. Since you're no longer my enemy, I'd sooner put you to use than see you rot. Oh? You've changed, little prince. I'm almost disappointed. Still, I suppose this is what true leadership looks like. Listen. I'd have your answer, Gangrel. Hmm. It was a lovely speech, but I'll pass. I'm just not the sort to play at hope and justice. If killing me would please you greatly, I'll not deny your satisfaction. Come, boy. Do an old king one last favor and end this charade now. Okay, I need to, like, not attack. Okay, please attack Krom. Good. <laughs> Imagine if he turned around and attacked one of my other units and died. I I would have freaking rage quit this game. Honestly. <laughs> I probably would have. Wait! Gangro, wait! <clears throat> you talk of slang cots, but you're too soft and one sorry little man. What are you waiting for? Do it! I give you my head on a silver platter. Damn you! You're pathetic. <clears throat> what? Listen to me. You're not even worth killing. Not like this. Your death would hold no meaning at all. <clears throat> Smug little. <clears throat> Either we end Grima or Grima ends us, and that includes your plegian citizens. If you would throw your life away, throw it at Grima. Die with sword in hand, not begging like some craven rat with its foot in a trap. You were a king once. Now suck up your self-pity and die for your people. Yeah, gods, but I despise you. Every word and every action of yours makes me want to paint the walls with my lunch. Then you would stay here to rot in. I wasn't finished. Gods, anything to make you stop talking. Look, I've never sworn an oath in my life, much less thought to keep one. But what little life I have remaining is yours. Dragon's cuts. Throw me at what you will. And just like that, we have our first character who died in the main game joining us in this adventure. Well, time for you to get deleted, random dude. Imagine if I accidentally attacked from one range and then died to, like, Astra or something. Bow low, scum. You are in the presence of the Southern. Instead of Southern, it's Southern Sea King. I just imagined, like... Seeking from Pokemon. I'm gonna adjust the baby cam a little bit because she's like stretch out forward a little bit. Well, well, he got deleted pretty quickly. Such strength, not human. Yeah, I needed to freaking, you know, get a lot of strength for this stupid game mode. Stupid difficulty. 13 turns, huh? My lord. Seeking is no more, my lord. With the seas open once again, the people here should know a measure of peace. Mm. Thank you, Frederick. We'd best hoist anchor and move on ourselves. 